Dear friends, welcome to our new video. If you are not subscribed the channel, please hit subscribe button and activate the bell button. This video is talking about being the first to try something new is what it means to be innovative. A common misunderstanding is that there is a distinct difference between being the first, being original, and being inventive. Being the first, being unique, and being innovative are all important, but it's easy to get them mixed up in the same sentence. In order to determine who or what was the first, a chronological test must be applied. It is necessary to conduct an originality test in order to establish whether or not someone, or something, is actually unique. There should be an answer to the following three questions, what exactly was done when, and has this ever been attempted before? When determining whether or not someone, or anything, is innovative, a practical test must be employed. Specific questions include, what was accomplished, how it was completed, and whether anything similar to this has ever been done before in the same manner as this. Following a thorough examination of the findings of the previous experiments, we can reach the following conclusions. It's more difficult to be the first and most innovative when you're also the only one in your field. The same set of tests is used to determine the degree of originality. Despite the fact that the examinations are identical, the emphasis is placed on distinct things. To ascertain if someone or something is the first of its kind, we utilize the words who and what before asking the question when. Resource conservation, which is critical for human survival, is made possible through innovation. Being the first to do something demonstrates the validity of the idea it is possible. When something is unique, it makes it crystal clear what is necessary or what is attainable. It is possible to learn how to do something new as a result of being innovative. These trailblazers, notably the originators and innovators, are endowed with societal prominence as well as other physical and intangible benefits as a result of their efforts. For this reason, the firsts are typically disregarded because they do not forge a new path. Instead, they demonstrate that a different route is possible. These individuals discover, expose, develop, put together, or express anything in order for others to be able to accomplish the same thing. Truly reconstruct the process, with less effort and resources than the originators and innovators have placed in the original process. Without necessarily being the first to do something, one can nonetheless be the first to say something or to accomplish something. As a result, the concept of being first is situational. Consider the following scenario, if I went to an Amazonian tribe and read them a passage from Kennedy's address. I wouldn't have been very innovative, but I would have been the first person to do it in that particular environment, of that particular tribe at that particular time. Modern science popularizers and religious missionaries are all trailblazers in their respective professions, yet their ideas are not novel in and of themselves. Their ability to be the first is decided by their audience, and history has proven that they are the first, or lack thereof. After failing to discover a solution to an old problem, many of us go back to the drawing board to start over. The amount of information that has been written and done before us is hard for us to comprehend in its entirety. We file patent applications, make scientific discoveries, and exploit, not so, fresh artistic ideas without realizing that we are not the first, the most original, or the most innovative. If we don't speak up, society may perceive us as less creative and imaginative than we believe ourselves to be. Consequently, there may be a phenomenon known as misunderstood brilliance syndrome. It is much easier for those of us who work with words, because there are so many various ways to utilize them that the chances of not coming up with something fresh or inventive first are nearly non-existent. As a result, copyright regulations have been established. So, the chances of being both unique and first are quite limited, especially considering that uniqueness is judged by the content of the creative, concept, work itself. The majority of the time, we simply restate or reword previously expressed thoughts. Those working in nonverbal domains of human effort will attest to the fact that the situation is worse, and the examinations are more difficult. That being the case, this is just too severe. Yes, isn't it true that we're all standing on the shoulders of giants? Is it possible to be creative and innovative without learning from the mistakes of earlier generations? Do you think it's possible? Is there potential for disruption, discontinuity, and disruption in the course of a product development process? Maintaining a certain amount of intellectual rigor, don't you think, is essential? To be sure, researchers and innovators base their innovations, explorations, and discoveries on, 
a restricted and perhaps random, selection of earlier excursions and studies. Moreover, he makes use of technology that was developed by his forefathers to measure and conduct other activities. The ability to improve in progress is still feasible even if one does not have access to historical artifacts. True, advancement demands a comparison with the previous state of affairs. In this scenario, language, on the other hand, contradicts the laws of reality. Rarely does an innovative concept emerge without any previous precedents to draw upon. In science, there are no smooth evolutionary processes to be found, even biological evolution is no longer considered a smooth affair. In contrast to logically unfolding syllogisms, phase shifts, paradigm shifts, and sudden pauses and starts are more likely to take place. The field of quantum mechanics has only been around for a brief period of time, or even in the relativity theories. Modern genetics and immunology, on the other hand, have even less knowledge. Because of the vast amount of human information that has already been accumulated. The notion of painstakingly constructing an ebony tower of scientific knowledge is completely unsupportable. If the first human built on the work of the person who came before him or her when it came to inventing new things, how did he or she do so? A new setting is created as a result of innovation. The human race is shaped by the thoughts that are unique to each individual, and those who are among the first to do something establish the ground rules for interaction. The discontinuous processes of invention and revolution have very little in common with one another in terms of continuity. It is true that our reactions to new circumstances and places vary with time as we gain experience. This is a location where continuity can be found. Realize your ambitions and aspirations in life. It is our perceptions of the world that shape what we see and experience in our daily lives. Learn to make your dreams come true by learning how our ideas affect the course of events in the world we live in. Hypnosis is used by Jason Johns and Sanjo to assist their clients in reaching their objectives. Each of us has a unique perspective on the cosmos. The world may appear unfair, demanding, and harsh to a man who is without shelter. For a wealthy individual, the universe is a beautiful place filled with pleasures and delights that may be enjoyed by everyone. Despite the fact that they both see the same universe, their perceptions of it and life experiences influence how they perceive it. Understanding that your perspective of the cosmos impacts how the universe seems to you is critical to understanding the universe. If you believe it is filled with hatred and terror, you are correct. If you look at it that way, it's filled with love and happiness. You can begin to make positive changes in your life by reprogramming your vision of the universe which can be accomplished through the use of some of the strategies outlined in this and other videos. When was the last time you feared something and it came true? Consider the implications of this. The likelihood of bumping into anything increases when one is fearful about doing so. Was it something that happened to you, or something that you conjured up? Consider all of the times you've been looking forward to something and it's finally arrived in your life. Because of the intensity and focus of the fear, the target of the fear frequently develops considerably more quickly than it would otherwise. It is not only on an emotional and psychological level that the world is produced, but it is also on a physical level that thought and belief bring about. If we believe we are bad with money, we will never be able to achieve financial success. With the use of your power of intention, you can bring about the changes you desire in your life. Keep in mind that you can only manifest the things in your life that you believe you are capable of having at this time. The desire for $1 million is worthless if one does not believe that one will be able to acquire it. Whatever happens, even if things literally fall out of the sky and land in your lap, you must recognize that this is not necessarily true. It may take some time for you to see the results of your efforts. It's not always simple, and you'll need both trust and patience to see it through to the finish line. Consider that the universe may be putting you through a test to determine whether or not you truly desire something and are prepared to devote yourself to acquiring it before you actually receive it. You can't just sit around and wait for your aspirations to materialize. In accordance with the saying, God assists those who assist themselves. True to their word, what they say. Pay attention to and follow your gut impulses when manifesting, as they will guide you through the process. The question of whether or not what you desire to materialize is compatible with your life mission can arise at times. If this isn't the case, you'll be up against an uphill battle in your efforts to bring it about. Don't put your faith in manifesting if you're doing so out of self-interest, and in the name of your ego. 
Selfless manifesting, as well as manifesting from a point of deeper self-awareness, is the most successful method of manifestation. When manifesting, it's crucial to keep an open mind because you never know how it will manifest itself in your life. Consider how many of us would like to materialize a larger sum of money in order to improve our financial situation. According to popular belief, greater money translates to more work requirements. There are a lot of ways in which more money can come your way, including a pay raise at work. A new profession or career, winning a competition, or inheriting money. Since you will have a far more difficult time manifesting your wishes if you restrict the methods in which the universe can supply for you, openness is necessary. Also, pay heed to your gut impulses because they can be really useful in directing you in the correct direction. It is possible that you will have an unexpected desire to purchase a newspaper. When you buy it, you'll be able to view the precise automobile you're looking for on the market at the time of purchase. It is by listening to our intuition, which comes from our higher selves, that we will be guided in the proper route. In order to bring about the results you desire, you might employ declarations, affirmations, and visualization to aid in your efforts. Increasing the amount of love, joy, and happiness in your life and the lives of people around you does not have to be confined to material possessions or activities. When attempting to make positive changes in your life, it is important to identify the root causes of your difficulties. You may, for example, assume that love is absent from your life at this point. It is possible that the problem arises from a lack of self-worth or self-love, or from anything that happened to you when you were a youngster, if you look deeper into the matter. Following a thorough understanding of the cause, you can take measures to treat the issue and repair your body. Then you'll have an easier time reaching your objectives and maintaining them over time. An additional manifesting exercise is to become aware of the abundance that exists in the cosmos. We'll talk about abundance in another piece and it's something that's covered in depth in the course. In the meantime, take a walk outside and take in the abundance of nature. See for yourself how gracious nature is and how much is available to be had. Take a moment to consider how this can assist you in living a prosperous life. To give an example, you could state aloud, I am deserving of respect and love both from others and from myself. I have a substantial amount of money in my possession. Money management is second nature to me, and I always make wise financial judgments no matter what the situation. The abundance of the universe is warmly welcomed into my life. I have developed a strong sense of intuition. As a decent and deserving human being, I realize that I am who I am. Finally, but certainly not least, keep in mind the following points. Confidence comes from having faith in your ability to attain your goals. Pay close attention to what your instinct is telling you about something. If this is in line with your life's mission, your higher self will assist you through the process of manifesting it. Achieving manifestation is not just about tangible things. It is also about the mind and spirit. You have the ability to attract more love, joy, serenity, and abundance into your life by just thinking about it. Create manifestations for others as well as for yourself, and don't stop there. As a result, altering your perception of the universe has an effect on it in some way. If you liked the video, press like and have a look on the references in the description box.